Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It really does help when you do that. So today, folks, I've got a brand new pedal to show you from Past Effects over in Australia. So new, in fact, that at the time of filming this, it hasn't actually been released yet. But don't worry, it's coming out very, very soon. This here is the brand new Stereo Chorus PX65. Now, you might be looking at the graphics of this pedal thinking, it looks a little bit familiar. And that's because it's a replica, or at least a variation on a theme, of an old DOD pedal called the Stereo Chorus FX65. Now, that's the chorus pedal that was rumoured to have been used by John Frusciante on the Blood Sugar Sex Magic album, and a lot of people are real fans of the chorus sounds on that record. And for various reasons, the original DOD pedal has kind of been creeping up in price over the last few years, because the word is out, as it were, that it's something of a hidden gem. So to have a modern boutique version using original Panasonic Matsushita Bucket Brigade delay chips and with a lot of extra functionality over the original is a very welcome addition to the market. Now today's intro is going to be a little bit longer than usual but please stick with me because it will hopefully make the playing you're about to hear make a lot more sense. Because as I said this pedal has a lot of functionality and it does take a little bit of getting your head round but once it clicks you have access to so many incredible sounds. So I'm going to talk you through everything this pedal can do because there is more to it than meets the eye on initial impressions. So, the original DoD pedal Stereo Chorus has two outputs, which this pedal does, and just three controls. Now, the three knobs across the top of this pedal are those three original controls, speed, delay time, and depth. But these three controls go to further extremes than the original. So speed, for example, this pedal will go slower and faster than the original. They all just operate kind of on a much wider range. So you can get the original DoD sounds, but plenty more besides. Now, speed and depth are fairly self-explanatory. Most chorus pedals like CE2s and small clones, or that has a depth switch, not a knob, have those two controls. But the really interesting part of this pedal is the delay time control in the middle. Now, if you've ever played around with a flanger pedal, something like the ADA flanger or the MXR M117, you might have come across a control called manual. And that is essentially exactly the same thing as this delay time control. Because on flangers and courses, the way they work very simplistically is your guitar input goes in and your signal is split into two components. You have the dry signal, which pretty much comes straight out of the output jack. It's not touched by the pedal at all. But you also have the wet signal. Now that is slightly delayed from the dry, hence why analog modulation pedals have a bucket brigade delay chips in them. And that delay time is then modulated. And that creates a kind of wobbly pitch bending vibrato effect. But it's when it's combined back with the dry signal on the output of the pedal and the two kind of interplay against each other, that's what creates the really interesting chorus and flanger effects. And the pretty much the only real difference between the chorus and the flanger pedal really is the initial delay time. Flangers have a much shorter initial delay, courses are much longer. And of course, once you have that fixed sort of center point for the delay, the speed of the pedal is how quickly it moves either side of that, fast or slow, and the depth is basically how far it moves either side of that. Higher depth, much more extreme effect. That's pretty much the difference between choruses and flanges. But on flanges, you can kind of adjust that initial delay time for different sort of tonal effects. You can think of it like a basic EQ for the pedal, really. So you don't usually find that on chorus pedals, but this one has it. So if you turn it down, you get a much shorter delay time as a center point, and that gives you a more kind of shimmery metallic type sound. And as you turn it up, the sound gets much more throaty and guttural and it's just a much more obvious effect overall. So you can adjust that on this pedal, which you can't on most chorus pedals. So it's really nice to have that. Now, on the original DoD, that's kind of as far as things went. But past effects being past effects, you get a lot more functionality that isn't present on the original. So the first thing is, on the original pedal, and this is a complaint of many 
vintage modulation pedals, when you turn it on, you do get a bit of a volume drop, which can be problematic if you're using it in a big rig or on a pedal board or whatever. So this pedal has a level control. With it turned all the way down, that is the original. So you will get a little bit of a volume drop. It's slightly below unity. And with it about nine o'clock, that boosts the signal up. So that it's pretty much the same volume bypassed and engaged. Of course, you can then boost it if you want to, but nine o'clock-ish is about unity. So you can adjust that. You also get a blend control, and this is a really interesting thing, because with it all the way up, that's the original DoD setting, but you can then turn it down and start to bring your clean dry signal back in. So you can set the controls pretty extreme and wacky, and then dial it down so that it's not overbearing and sounding too comical. So it's great to be able to choose how much of the affected signal you want on the output of the pedal. So the blend control is a wonderful addition. And you also get this vibrato switch. You can think of that being a little bit like a kill dry switch. And essentially it just gets rid of the dry element of the chorus effects. You're left with that pitch bending vibrato. So you can use it as a vibrato pedal as well as a chorus. Now, of course, you have to have the blend all the way up in vibrato mode, because if you're trying to blend in a dry signal that then doesn't exist, you'll just turn the volume down. So you'll need the blend all the way up for that, but you can use it as a pitch bending vibrato in its own right. So some great extra functionality there, but where this pedal gets really interesting is the toggle switch in the middle, which is marked Dave and Andy. Now, Dave refers to Dave Simpson, who does a lot of gear demos on YouTube, fabulous guitarist, and he's a well-known lover of the original DoD. So in Dave mode, that is the original DoD FX65 sound. But Andy refers to Andy Martin of Andy Demos and Pro Guitar Shop. You know Andy, the original goat of gear demos on YouTube, because he has a DoD original pedal and uses it in a slightly different way. Now, the stereo outputs on this pedal, it's not like on a CE1 that splits your wet component from your dry and you get that interplay happening just in different amplifiers. It's not like that. It's more similar to something like the old Boss Dimension C because on the outputs, the dry element is exactly the same on both, but on the top one, the wet signal is flipped in phase from what it is on the bottom. So on the bottom, you get your dry signal and your wet signal in phase, and on the top jack, you get your dry signal and your wet signal out of phase. So using just one of the jacks gives you a slightly different sound because of that wet element being out of phase. But when you use it together, you get that sort of dimension C head in a box spatial chorus effect because your amps are in phase, the dry signals are in phase, but the wet elements are out of phase and kind of fighting against each other and phase canceling each other out, basically. So what people have learned over the years, especially Andy, is that using the top jack as a mono output gives you a different voice and some sort of different behavior from the pedal. So what the Dave and Andy switch does essentially is reverse the two jacks. So if you're running two outputs into two different amps, it doesn't really have much effect because all it does is take the wet elements that are in and out of phase and just put them into the other amp. So overall the effect is broadly the same, just it's reversing the jacks. But in mono mode, if you're using the bottom jack, for example, and that's the sound you like, but you want to, to kind of experiment with the top jack sound, you don't have to pull the jack out and put it in the top jack. You can just flip it into Andy mode, it reverses the jacks and you get that sound at the flick of a switch. So two different voices and some really interesting effects to be had by messing around with that toggle. So today what I'm going to do is I'm primarily going to demo this pedal running in mono into an amp because that's how most people will use it and running it in mono does make the Dave and Andy switch make a lot more sense. But at the end, just for a bit of fun, I'm going to run dual outputs, leave it in Dave mode because as I said, the switch won't really do much. And I'm going to pan those amps out in Pro Tools to show you that kind of stereo spatial dimension type chorus effect this pedal 
can create. Now, there were two versions of the original pedal, the FX65 and the FX62. The 62 was basically the base version of the pedal. And inside here, you do get two toggle switches on the circuit board to allow you to change this pedal from the guitar version to the bass. Now, I'm not going to demo that today because I've played around with it. And to be honest, they sound very, very similar. I think the bass mode just gives you a little bit less filtering on the low end and it might just adjust the component value here and there. But overall, they sound pretty much the same. But if you're a traditionalist and you want to use this with a bass guitar, you can flip those toggle switches and you can get the 62 sound as well. So, so much functionality in this pedal. As I said, it does take a little bit of figuring out, but once you get there and it, you get that light bulb moment, it makes so much sense and there are kind of infinitely fun sounds to be had in this pedal. So, without further ado, folks, here we go. <laughs>
There we are folks. Now please do comment underneath, let me know what you thought of the PX65 today. I love chatting nerdy guitar stuff with you folks down in the comment section. Now as I said in the intro, there is so much functionality in this small box, isn't there? Having adjustment over that initial delay time is worth its weight in gold. You could think of it like a rudimentary EQ for the pedal really. Turn it down for the shorter delay time, you can really make it shimmer. Turn it up, it becomes much more throaty and obvious, but being able to change that really does make this pedal so worthwhile. 
as does being able to fix the level drop, getting a vibrato effect, and also being able to blend the dry signal back in. Because you can set this thing to sound absolutely nuts, which I did at a few points today, and then just blend it out a little bit. So it's there shimmering away in the background, but it's not taking over your entire sound. So there is so much this pedal can do, and running it in stereo like I did at the end there, it really does create a kind of phasey dimension spatial chorus type effect that is so inspiring sitting here in the room in front of two amps working that magic. But those are just my thoughts, folks. Please do comment underneath and let me know yours. I love hearing from you guys on all this sort of stuff. So thank you for watching, folks. I hope this video was interesting and useful for you. I'll put a link to the Past Effects website in the description. So head over there and check out everything they make because I'm yet to try a Past Effects pedal I don't absolutely love. Please do carry on subscribing as well. I know I always say it, but it makes a huge difference when you hit subscribe. And I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>